Hey everybody, Joe McCall with Real Estate Investing Mastery. I'm really glad you're here and I'm with a good friend, Trent Wood from Oklahoma City or Tulsa? I'm actually in between. Okay. Uh, about 45 minutes from each, each way. Oklahoma is a beautiful state, but we've never gone to Oklahoma to go to Oklahoma. We're always driving through to go down to Texas. And I'm sure that really irks Oklahomans, right? <laughs> as long as you stop and get gas, I guess we'll get a little bit of your tax money. <laughs> or stop at one of your casinos. Yeah, yeah. But I don't know if we get any tax money from that. So, <laughs> <laughs> All right. So uh, Trent and I have been uh, – well, first let me tell you guys. Go to realestateinvestingmastery.com to download our Fast Cash Survival Kit. And in there, Alex and I teach you how we wholesale deals, how we wholesale deals with equity or deals without equity, how we find our sellers, how we find our buyers, how we get virtual assistants to do almost all of it for us. It's a pretty cool resource. You're going to get a lot of value out of it. And I know most of you listening to this have already gone there and downloaded it. I'd encourage you to go through it again. Uh, go back to the website and get it again because there's so many good things in there. I was reviewing it the other day thinking, wow, I came up with this stuff. This is pretty good um, in all humility, right? So the other thing I wanted to tell you is uh, we'd appreciate you leaving a review in iTunes. Do you like this podcast? Do you like the show? We hope you do. Uh, let us know. Please go to iTunes. And if you haven't subscribed yet in iTunes, subscribe in iTunes and uh, download these episodes and leave a review. We'd really appreciate it. I will tell you there was an episode I did six, eight months ago called Leave a Review, Get Free Stuff. And if you do leave a review in iTunes um, and you go to that page, if you go to realestateinvestingmastery.com, go to the search box and um, find that episode. I think if you just do, if you just search for stuff, you'll find that link. And in there, I show you how to get all this free stuff. I think we had a couple books and some videos and things like that. So leave us a review on iTunes. And by the way, too, if you're a Google Android fan, which I am not, I have my iPhone right here and my Apple Watch. <laughs> I'm a nerd, Apple nerd. So, but anyway, uh, Google Android users, I just got a notification the other day that Google and their Android and all their smartphone devices are actually going to be making podcasts like native in all of their Android phones. So you don't have to go download another podcasting app. It's going to be coming with all of the new Androids and all the updates starting in 2016, so in a few months, which would be really cool. So just like an iPhone, there's a podcasting app that's in there. The Google Android phones are going to have podcast apps already native in there. So hopefully that even uh, increases our audience some more, and we'd really appreciate you guys leaving a review in iTunes or pretty soon Google Play if you like this show. I'd really appreciate it. Um, Trent, thanks for coming on the show, man. I appreciate it. No problem. Uh, do you listen to podcasts much? Um, that's about all I do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So what are what are some of your favorite shows? And it's okay if, if ours is not um, on your list. No, uh, so, actually, i tell you the truth. I uh, started off listening to uh, Sean Terry, mm -hmm. um, probably because at the time he was probably pushing podcasts the, at the yeah. most at the time. Um, yeah. That was almost two years ago. Um, start listening to him, um, then come across, uh, Peter Conti and, uh, Jerry Norton, I think on there, I can't remember what it's called now. Flip they guys. Had one for, flip guys. Yeah. And then, uh, bigger pockets, obviously I started listening to them some and, uh, podcast. yours was probably right in the mix of all those. Um, I think, I think what was the first one I listened to probably was, Alex talking about that he was sitting at home, um, hoping nobody could see him because he might be sitting in his underwear or something like that. <laughs> so I don't remember which one that was, but anyways, I do remember him talking about how lazy he was and didn't want to <laughs> do anything but sit there and, you know, he was happy to what he did and going on about that. And I thought, well, that's pretty interesting, you know, because he was talking about his time freedom and different things that he was go had going on, so. Yeah, I started listening to that, and uh, that's where I got started, I guess, just listening to podcasts. You know, we Alex and I have joked for years we should create a course called Wholesaling in Your Underwear. <laughs> I think that's a great title. Yeah, yeah it is. You yeah. know, depending. You, you might need it. You might trademark it. 
Well, you know, <laughs> most of the guys listening to this podcast are, you know, guys in their 40s. So, you know, I don't think we need to worry about offending too many of the ladies out there. But, yeah. uh, you know, I think wholesaling in your underwear would appeal to a lot of guys. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they, they get the image of uh, sitting in the recliner and kick back, I guess, you know. <laughs> <laughs> but I will tell the truth, and Alex is not here to defend himself, so I'll go ahead and take all, of, all my advantage to that. Um, he does wear these Sesame Street uh, pajama pants. It's either Elmo or Cookie Monster or Big Bird or one of those. And, um, yeah, he's proud of those things, I guess, you know. <laughs> yeah. But uh, good. So, Trent, um, there's a lot of good podcasts out there, and you named some really good ones, and there's probably four or five, six more out there. And I think it's really important that you uh, get educated, you know, get out there and start listening to these free podcasts. There's a lot of really good podcasts out there. And uh, I think ours is one of the best, in my humble opinion. We've been doing it since 2011, Trent. And yep. we actually have listeners in over 170 different countries, wow. which blows me away. Yeah. Yeah. So hello, everybody out there um, in Afghanistan that's listening to this. There are people from Afghanistan listening to our podcast. So, um, so Trent, talk. you're in Oklahoma City. Um, are you an OSU fan or an Oklahoma what is it? Uh, University of Oklahoma? No, o, OU. OU. Uh, Oklahoma Sooners, yeah. Okay. I'm well, sorry to hear that. That's all right. It's That's better. All right. Um, so, how long have you been in Oklahoma? I was born and raised in Oklahoma. Okay. Um, <clears throat> I was actually about 10 minutes away from where the Sooners play. So. Oh, really? Yeah, they play in Norman. I live over in Newcastle, Blanchard, which is just a little ways away from them. Nice. Um, now, um, we moved to Bristow, which is about halfway between. It's a little community, so it's it's in it's on the turnpike. So coming yeah. down I forty four. So all right. Now you signed up for my automated wholesaling coaching program six eight months ago. Is that right? Mm, six months ago. Yeah. Okay. What Maybe. What were you doing before that? <clears throat> Absolutely nothing. Okay. <laughs> no. Um, we actually, as far as uh, investing and stuff like that, I'd been, like I said, listening and talking to my wife about it, uh, doing different things. Uh, we've done a couple of our own stuff as far as, you know, borrowed money from the bank, fixed up a house, sold it, made money on it. Um, I've been in construction basically all my life. Yeah, um, got into computers and stuff when I was in high school and decided I wanted to go be an architect and kind of dropped that when I realized how much math there was and <laughs> decided, oh, I don't want to do that. And I just picked up the CAD stuff and started doing the, more of the CAD and yeah, that's smart. doing that. So, um, but yeah, I've been doing a lot of CAD work and project engineer for the last, uh, I don't know, five or six years. And before that, I actually owned my own company for uh, three years, four years, something okay. like that. Build cabinets, really? cabinet shop. Yeah. And uh, for that, I worked for my dad. And that's where I got my, I guess, my construction background, building houses and doing a lot of extra stuff with him and running his uh, computer programs. And okay. uh, he had cabinet programs that i ran and had cad stuff so are you still doing there are you still doing any of that right now i am i do it on the side do it for people when they need it um actually right now i'm actually working for my dad part-time just my brother went to california and decided that um he was going out there for vacation and had all kinds of issues getting out there and his minivan broke down and Anyways, he hasn't made it back, so I'm yeah. helping, dad, helping dad for the time being for a little while. So That's cool. You get to work with your dad. Yeah. You know, some of us yeah. take our dads for granted. I know I do, and I miss, yeah. I miss my dad. Dad, if you're listening, hello. <laughs> but uh, that's cool. You get to work with your dad, isn't it? Yeah. All right. Yeah, so he, tra he trained me what I know, and I learned a lot from him. So yeah, he's probably He gets a lot dad. of credit for what I, what I do know. <laughs> yeah. All right. All right. So what kind of describe your, 
your um, your edge like your evolution into wholesaling. You're starting to do deals now pretty consistently. You know, were you just dabbling in it a little bit here and there? And what finally made you decide I'm going to actually start doing deals now? Well, um, I think the main thing was is the time factor. I didn't feel like I had time to put into it. Okay. And so I would send out marketing, um, try to try to handle phone calls and do things and realize that if I couldn't follow up with them and couldn't get in touch with them, then I was losing deals. Yeah. Um, so <clears throat> my wife and I talked about it and, uh, it's kind of funny. You're talking about podcast. Uh, I got her to be a podcast junkie. Yeah. Uh, she, uh, she really, at first she was like, what are you listening to all the time? <laughs> yeah. And she was getting kind of frustrated because I kept on telling her what Sean Terry might've said or what you might've said. And I was like, we've got to do this. We've got to try it. You know? And I said, I don't, I, I can't see any, she was always about the risk. Yeah. And part of that was because, Back in 08, when everything started going downhill, was when I was in the cabinet business in my own shop, and we almost lost everything. Yeah. And <clears throat> lucky for me, I found somebody that would buy my, my my tools and buy my shop out, and I walked away with nothing, but I didn't really lose anything either, you know? So, yeah, yeah. I mean, we lost some uh, credibility, I guess, but that was part of the market, I you know, nothing we could do about it at the time. So, sure, sure. but anyways, she became a, she started listening along with me to these podcasts. And, um, as she grew more like you, you've got to do it. And so she started pushing me and she's like, just quit listening to the podcast and just go do it. Good. So I give her credit for that. Cause she was just like, you've got to do it if that's what you want to do. So go do it, you know? Good, good. So that's that's where I guess <clears throat> I took that step and just said, you know, what's it going to cost me? A few hundred dollars here and there, I guess, to do direct mail. Um, maybe, you know, even pay-per-click, whatever I got to do. Okay. Uh, some bandit signs, you know. I know people kind of frown on that sometimes. <laughs> you yeah. know, I was like, well, hey, if I get taken down, I guess, it, not, but I get a phone call or get a deal off of it, I'll be okay with that for now but so we did that um i recruited my wife and my son into building bandit signs while i was at work oh yeah so we bought the poster and wrote on them with a magic marker and put them on a wood stake and put them out nice <laughs> several calls from that so all right so what when did it, when did it start to finally happen you start to do, do um, start to do deals my first deal actually was, let's see, I first got my first contract on uh, in February of this year. Is that the one where I, you sent me a picture of you holding a check and then the next picture was you holding a bunch of cash? No, that was actually, that one was more like in June or July. Okay, okay. So, um, no, that the first deal actually got a house that's just, it was down the road from my house. <clears throat> and uh it was uh hang on let me get a drink that's cool getting choked up here <clears throat> the uh house was just down the road and it was just junk basically um mold and had a big old hole in the roof and i got it for 11 five and turned around and sold it for 12 five okay or just signed the contract to somebody um, so I was excited about that, made a thousand dollars, didn't really do anything other than, uh, send a letter to the guy saying, Hey, I want to buy this house. And he's like, well, you want to buy that one? I've got another one down the road too. Yeah. I'll sell you both of them. So <clears throat> I actually said, well, let's, let's make two contracts. Let's get a contract on each one. And I said, I'll try to buy both of them. And he said, okay. So the other one was like 33 five is a nicer house, but I couldn't get it sold. Uh, there's some foundation issues and I didn't get it. Obviously I didn't get a low enough price on it to wholesale yeah. it. So, yeah. but anyways, on that one, yeah, I made 11,000 on those. I mean, I'm sorry. I made a thousand on those. Right. Okay. 
<clears throat> and then in uh, June, um, I got another one that uh, we was in Edmond, Oklahoma. And that's the one you're talking about where okay. I sent you those pictures. Is it okay um, if I use those pictures in the uh, oh, podcast? Yeah. Okay. yeah, that's fine. Yeah. Um, we, uh, I went, well, I told my wife, I was like, well, I said, you know, I could deposit this, but when I had that check. I was like, well, I can go deposit it. But I decided that I was like, well, I want my son to see $10,000. And sweet. he said, you know, it was just, I guess more of a visual for him. How and old's your son? Eight. Eight. Okay. Yeah, and he's been helping us. I mean, that's what. Oh, really? Part of it was is <clears throat> I tell him, you know, he he would uh, he would peel the back off of the uh, envelopes, and we'd have him peel the backs off of the envelopes, shut them up, and then put the stamp on it. That's great. That's fantastic. Because I've been totally. thinking, I've been thinking about how I can get my son, who's uh, ten, involved. He keeps on bugging me, and the only thing I can. Because I have a mail house that does the mail right. for me, but maybe I should start just having him do my mail for me. Because he he keeps on asking me, "Hey, Dad, I want to help." Well, and I told him, I told him, I said, you know, I said we can we can work out a deal with you. I said if you'll do it, I said I'll pay you one percent of every deal. And he's like, "What's that?" You know, he's kind of trying to figure it out. And I said, "Well, I said so on this deal, I made ten thousand dollars on it. That means you get a hundred. Wow. Because the first deal, you know, I made a thousand. So I, I kind of get, and he had done the same thing. So I gave him $10. Yeah. And he couldn't, he couldn't really figure out the percentage thing exactly, you know, but he's getting it now. He understands what's going on now. <laughs> so it doesn't take, doesn't take too long when you're holding $10,000 in cash in your hand. Yeah. And so he's excited to, you know, get another deal. He's like, so I get another. Hundred dollars, or I get another fifty dollars. Like, yeah, that's right. So as soon as we get something closed, he gets a little bit of money. Um, but he's working for it, you know. So um, he sits there and uh, puts, you know, two hundred and fifty stamps on two hundred and fifty envelopes. So wow, you know, <laughs> he's not getting off easy. I guess he's sitting there, but he loves it. He loves doing it. So that's excellent. You know, I um. I've been thinking, oh, maybe I could have my son go to Craigslist and send text messages for me. Yeah. Um, but then I got him. I sat him down at a computer, and you know, just to try to teach him the copy and paste and all of that's putting it <laughs> into spreadsheets. I'm like, oh my gosh, maybe I need something a little simpler. You know, like it's just putting a stamp on an envelope. Yeah. I like that. Yeah. All right. So you're having your son help you. Good. Yeah. Um, go ahead. You were telling your story. Oh, well, I was just going to say about the, the so we got the $10,000, part of the reason why I did that, I got the money, and <clears throat> he, uh, he listens to the podcast, uh, along with my wife, she would play them through the house, and so, uh, it's kind of funny, he, she started off several year, years ago, they'd listen to Dave Ramsey, yeah, and, uh, he would he would tell us you need to cut up the credit card or what you know and he and his his deal is he wants to his goal is for us to all go to Dave Ramsey to Nashville to the to where Dave Ramsey's at and scream we're debt free oh nice that's what he wants to do he is he's we told him we're going to do that and he's excited about that so oh that's cool you know so a couple more deals we may be able to do that. So, <laughs> Oh, man, that's yeah. awesome. I, I get uh, Dave Ramsey's Instagram thing on yeah. here. And every at least couple times a week, he's got somebody with a short little um, Instagram video, like, you know, five, ten seconds long of some family screaming, I'm debt free. Yeah. <laughs> that's awesome. But anyway, so, yeah, he's he's been excited about that. But we uh, – so – that one we closed in June or July. I guess it was July, 1st of July. And then um, <clears throat> took that money and uh, put it back into marketing. And I think that's when I went ahead and bought your course. 
in automated wholesaling. Yeah. Um, we did that and started setting up some systems. I haven't got everything set up completely. Part of it was I just didn't have the time and, sure. you know, um, we, uh, on this next round, uh, these next two houses actually are, have our partners with guys. So they will be, uh, one of them will be my contact, I guess, in Oklahoma City. The other one's my contact in uh, Tulsa. So, so you're leveraging maybe, you're leveraging other people now. I love it. Yes, yes. So maybe the marketing that I've got going now, we will be able to get them moving. They're both pretty good, pretty good guys, and pretty have been doing quite a few deals. Uh, they're on their own, but they were happy to work with me, and they wanted. You know, obviously they want to do more deals. If I'll bring them a deal, they're yeah. like, yeah, sure, we'll do it, you know. Well, so let me explain so. a little context of what Trent's talking about. Uh, in automated wholesaling, I teach how to build a wholesaling business where you get someone else to do all of the work for you. And one of the ways you do that is by, you know, getting somebody to do the marketing for you, getting somebody to pre-screen the leads for you, or you could do the pre-screening yourself. It's not a big deal. But then getting someone else to, you know, talk to the sellers and go to the house and get it under contract and sell it. Um, if you set it up right, which is what I've done for the last several years while we go to Europe or while we go on our RV trips, is getting um, getting other people to literally do all of the work for you. And that's what Trent's talking about here. That's what the automated wholesaling system's about. Um, so good. Now, the uh, talk a little bit about in the last uh, few months, how many deals have you done, Trent? Um, well, the last two months... Uh... We've actually I've only done two, I guess. We've done two. Um, we did. Uh, we've got one that should be closing next week. Okay. And then uh, one, I should have closed on it almost a month ago, maybe a little bit longer than that. But the <clears throat> elderly lady that we were buying it from, she actually lost consciousness okay. and went into the hospital so in the meantime we've just held everything up in limbo so everything the title and everything's in still at the title company is waiting for her to sign so <clears throat> she has slowly started making recovery they've been talking to me about it and she's uh hopefully she's gonna get better they said so okay good yeah hopefully her daughter her daughter uh was helping her with it too and so they needed to sell it. It was something they needed to get rid of, and it's kind of a bad deal that she she broke an arm or hip or something like that, and you know how those surgeries can be. So they sure. she was old enough; it it took her down pretty pretty far. Wow. So, okay. Okay. You know, you said you've done about five deals in the last three months. Is that right? Um. Maybe it. it I'd say if, I think it's just four. Okay. I'm, I'm trying to think. Uh, yeah, it was just four. No, that, yeah, uh, yeah, that would be five. I did, uh, yeah, I've actually closed on four houses, or will be closing okay. on four houses. I did the one, had one under contract, didn't get it. Okay. Sold. So, good. good. <clears throat> We've tried to do five deals. We only did, actually got four. I well, guess. That's fantastic, though. That's really good. Yeah, for a total, I figured it up. Um, we did, uh, we did, we're doing, uh, Ten on the first one, I mean, a thousand on the first one, ten on the second one, uh, eleven on the this this one that should be closing next week, and then eighty five hundred for the next one. So that's what almost thirty thousand dollars. That is fantastic, man. Yeah. So good for you. And about and how much how much money do you think you've spent in marketing in the last three four months to get those deals? Um. I know we've sent out a little over 1,500 letters. Wow, that's it? And yeah. Yes, sir. <laughs> <coughs> sent, out, sent out 1,500 letters and uh, put out maybe uh, 40 or 50 bandit signs. Um, 
did some calls on Craigslist and that kind of stuff. And mm -hmm. but most of it's been direct mail, actually. Yeah. So um, now, just imagine if you took 10, 20 percent of your profits and reinvested it into marketing and right. started doing fifteen hundred postcards a week. How much more business could you do, right? Exactly. Yeah, and, and that's my ultimate goal, obviously. And yeah. that's it's been. Uh, tough but part of it was because i haven't closed on these houses like sure. i said i put out marketing and some of you know i've got stuff back and <clears throat> some of them have just called out of the blue after i mean actually the one that is supposed to be closing next month um that one was we sent out those letters back in probably february yeah and uh we followed up a little bit with you know some of those letters we sent out some more to those same addresses and the lady that is closing on or that we're closing on next month her brother actually wanted me to come and i went and looked at a house that he has and made him an offer and he hasn't called me back yet but he said he'll do the deal but he just don't know when yeah so, <laughs> all right so all right i'll probably push his buttons again and just kind of see what he's up to and see what I can do with that. Um, I've gotten several calls and made several, I mean, made a lot of offers. We make, we try to make an offer on every deal. Okay. And I've used, uh, used Matt Terrio's three option letter of intent. I, I love I that. I guess, name. you know, yeah. I've tried to use that as much as possible. Um, cause I, my long-term strategy, I guess, would be to do more, holding on to some of them sure sure through either lease options or through leases and or just buying them outright as rentals yeah, yeah. those of you who don't know what he's talking about um matt terrio didn't invent this and, and i've talked to him about it but he just kind of perfected it it's called the three option letter of intent and you know people have been doing this for years and years a lot of you know he's learned it from other people but it's basically you send out a uh, a letter or an offer to every lead that comes in, every lead with, you know, even if they're motivated or not, and it's a cash offer and one or two seller financing offers. And I like to add even possibly a lease purchase offer. But the idea is you give sellers options. You give them options. And so sometimes they're not going to take your cash offer, but it opens up the door to talk about another offer where you get them more but with on your terms. So it's either price or terms. I, I describe it that like that sometimes to sellers. Um, it's, I think it's really important that you set up the right, the systems in place so that those, you can, you can automatically mail out letters of intent to sellers, even if they're not motivated to sell. Very good. So Trent, I wanted to ask you about how do you select your market? Like, um, do you, are, are there, do you go after absentee owners, you know, Tired landlords? Do you go after certain zip codes? All the homeowners mm. in those zip codes? What do you do? Uh, no, you know, that's part of it. I think that part of the reason why I guess my response has been, it seems like my response rate's really been good to get, I, you know, I've listened to some guys and they talk about sending out thousands and thousands of letters and getting, you know, one to 2%, you know, return and, or calls or whatever. Yeah. It seems like I've gotten good response off of what I've been doing. Most of it's been uh, absentee owners and I've tried to target, uh, do more targeted uh, where I know that cash buyers are going to want. Okay. You know, um, I've been doing more research a little bit. I probably, probably overanalyze things. Um, yeah. I know I'm bad, I'm bad about that. I overanalyze it and look at it and think, okay, I can, I'm a, I guess I'm more of an efficiency expert and try to okay. figure out the best, most efficient way to use my money. And nothing, uh, nothing it wrong be with a that. Detriment probably. <laughs> it could be a detriment some ways, but <clears throat> I've been, uh, yeah, I've tried to do my, uh, targeted marketing just by zip codes, um, that I know are hot. Uh, and then I drill down some more and try to find uh, as many three bed, two baths, and you know, I don't know. Try to make sure that what I do, my marketing, that I know that 
hey, if I get at least one deal out of all that, then, you sure. know, I know, I'll, usually I'll know it's a good deal. Now, are hopefully. you, these letters, are you sending a little bit every day? Um, I've been sending about, about 200 uh, a month. Okay. So, you know, we just, part of it, like I said, we didn't have the resources really just to put all that into it. And like I told you, I quit my full-time job yeah. to do this. And uh, so yeah. what I do make, I have to live off of, yeah, I get you know, it. but at the same time, it's gave me more time to focus on refining the business, I guess, and me- making things happen. Right. What you might consider doing, Trent, is taking maybe just 20, 30 letters a day, you know, and you can print them on your home printer, get your son to, if you, I don't know if his handwriting's good enough, you could handwrite the address on the envelopes. Yeah, nah, yeah, probably. All yeah, right, he's well, probably. You know, and the, the funny too, you think, oh, it's not professional, you know, but you'll be surprised how much better your open rates and response rates will be if it has handwritten. It looks like a kid on your envelopes. And then make sure he makes the po- the, the postage crooked, you know, so it even draws more. Wow, he does that without this? thinking about it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> All right, so you're going after, uh, I love that, Trent. You're going after zip codes where there's a high demand. Right. And there's, I've shown, there's, I've, I've talked about that hundreds of times on this podcast. But um, if you go back to Real Estate Investing Mastery, Dot com you'll see a video I did on the, my favorite ways it's called my favorite ways to find cash buyers and there's a strategy I think that's it but you can go to list source and find the most active zip codes by county for free right so you're going in to see the most active counties and it's pretty easy to figure out listen if I can find a deal in this county I can sell it pretty quickly and easily to these buyers and I like how you're doing that um, do you yeah I learned, I learned that from you Okay, <laughs> that's that's what I was I hoping. Give me you'd credit say. for that one. All right. Um, now, yeah. how do you, how do you handle your leads that come in, Trent? Um, answer the phone. What a brilliant concept! <laughs> All right. So does yeah. it, does the call go to you? Does it go to a voicemail? Does it go to a call center? Um, it would. Usually, it's just going to go straight to me. Um, now, if I know I'm going to be busy or, you know, got things going on, I'll try to make sure that it's going to at least a, somewhere to capture the, their number and, you know, at least give me something to call back and sure. see what they wanted. And, you know, um, I'm working on the, uh, I guess, call fire, or call, call rail mm-hmm. uh, structure. I'm going to set that up with the next deal. That When I finish that, I'll set that all up. <clears throat> we'll do that. <clears throat> Excuse me. By the way, if you need help with that, you can feel free to contact my office, and we'll help you with call rail setup. Okay. Since yeah, you're, got... since you're a student, right? Everybody else listening <laughs> to this, don't call my office trying to get help. <laughs> well, and uh, you know, I've I've really uh, been. I watched your deal with Dan Schwartz. Mm-hmm on the patio, uh, automation. And, um, that's one thing I have been working on too, is doing more automation and more, um, I'm still, I'm still trying to figure out and maybe I get it figured out eventually, but I want it to be to where when I make some things in patio, I want it to, you know, fill out the three option letter. Uh, yeah, the three option letter of intent with, like you said, with the maybe when I click another button, it'll add the lease option mm-hmm. as something that might even be interested. <clears throat> so I'm that kind of stuff. I am working towards, you know, getting some of that set up so I can. Let, let me give you some good advice. And this is not just for you, Trent, but everybody else listening to this. Um, because, you know, I, I've been selling Podio for a long time. I even have the domain podiojoe.com and joepodio.com. <laughs> so I'm probably breaking all kinds of terms and conditions with Podio by doing that. So, um, But anyway, I've been selling Podio for a long time, and I've been always selling the idea that you need to automate your business and systemize it and get everything done for you in spite of you. And that sounds good. But one of the things I've been seeing people struggling with is 
spending all of this time, I don't want to say wasting, but spending all of this try time trying to get the systems working to getting Podio to do this and this and this and this. So all you do is click some buttons. And that's great, but I, I see a lot of people just stumbling over that. Um, right. and, and not everybody's as techy as I am or as you are, Trent. And, and they're like, they get totally lost and confused and then they get discouraged and depressed and give up and this doesn't mm -hmm. work like, like you said it would. But here's my advice to, to you, Trent, and everybody listening. Sometimes the best automation you can get is a good virtual assistant. Okay? And, you know, Podio has all these fancy workflows, and you can get Globiflow, and you can get Zapier, and you can get MailChimp, and Lob, and three or four other tools that are kind of like third-party stuff. And once that's built, that's great. That stuff works, and we can help you do that. But sometimes, you know what? You just need a good virtual assistant to help you do all of that stuff. And so what happens mm -hmm. then is you're, the only workflow you need is, all right, when a new lead comes in, create a new task for the VA to you know, make it look nice or call them back or whatever. And this is really important. Uh, Tom Kroll and I are coming out with a small little mini course called um, Outsourcing. We don't, we're don't. we trying to think of a, a, a cute, funny name for it. I suggested Slap Your Mama Outsourcing, but uh, he didn't like that idea. <laughs> but because uh, the reason why I said that is because I'm getting so frustrated sometimes with people trying to get all of these systems – and they're, they're wasting too much time behind their laptop or their computer. They're spending too much time buried in Podio trying to figure it all out. And I, so I thought, well, slap your mama outsourcing because I want to slap them across the head. <laughs> I'm like, stop. You, know, you, you need to focus yeah. your time and energy on the highest and best use of your time in the, in the highest revenue generating activities, which is what? Talk to Talking sellers. to sellers and making offers, right? So I, I wanted to bring this up because – a lot of guys are struggling with that. I would suggest you consider hiring a good virtual assistant. And maybe it's not a virtual assistant. Think of it more like a personal assistant. So you get this lead, Trent, on your phone, which I'm glad you're taking these calls on your phone, right? And you say, you know, you get some basic information. You chicken scratch it out on your yellow pad of paper. And then all you do then, Trent, is you send a voice memo to your assistant using something like Voxer or WhatsApp. Uh, you know, hey, Jane, I talked to the seller at 123 Main Street. Go ahead and update the lead that um, they're not motivated. It's listed, um, but the listing expires in two months. Uh, go ahead and send them an offer in the mail and remind me in two months to call them back. Boom. You send that voice memo and it's done, right? Then you don't have to worry about it anymore. So right. when your VA is in Podio then, she updates it with the notes. She sets the task to remind her to call back or follow up in a month. She sends the offer in the mail for you. And there's ways you can do that. Even if she's in the Philippines, you can send offers and letters through Google Docs and, and click to mail and stuff. So that's something that I've been really, really passionate about a lot lately. Just, you know, get somebody that can help you like a personal assistant or a virtual assistant. And it'll make your life so much easier. And, and there's also kind of in a sense, there's even like better quality control with that stuff. So I've been telling people, listen, take all of the training videos that we've done with Podio and give them to your virtual assistant. Let them figure the systems out. It's really simple and easy. And, and then what you do is you're driving around in your truck. I bet you have a truck, right, Trent? Yes. All right. You're driving around in your truck. <laughs> And uh, you get a special email address that only your personal assistant or your virtual assistant has. Okay, so You only get emails from her in there. And then what you do is every morning she sends you an email of maybe three emails of the next three things you have to do and puts all the information in your phone. So you're not sitting in Podio in the first thing in the morning and looking at all the things you got to do and getting lost in this all this detail. So you, you look at the information in the email. You call the seller. You voice memo the VA back, and then you delete the email. When you got those three emails done, you voice memo your VA, hey, send me another, the next thing I got to do. That way you can be in your truck, looking at houses, making offers, talking to sellers, and you're not in Podio all the time updating it. Does that make sense? Yeah, I like that. I'm get, I get hot and excited <laughs> about that because I, I get these coaching calls all the time from folks getting frustrated, like I'm trying to set up my system. Okay, well, how many sellers have you talked to? Well, I haven't talked to any yet because I'm trying to set up my systems. No, you know, so something to think yeah. about that's really important. Just 
keep your eyes and ears open, everybody, because Trent, I mean, um, uh, Tom Kroll and I are talking about this. Yeah, uh, and you, it's funny you say that because probably, I don't know, um, I spend I spend time doing some of that, setting things up like that. Um, but, yeah, I, mean, I try not to. I try not to get bogged down with all that. I try not to um, let it. I, I still want. I, I got. I understand the the follow up, mm-hmm. and uh, that's one thing that I'm trying to make sure that that's getting done. But that's as far important. as every, everything else, uh, you know, the offer. I don't spend a lot of time on it. I try to get it and send, yeah. sit down, and do it, and get it sent back out. <clears throat> but to get my systems, uh, I guess, like I said, I'm more of a systems kind of guy, I guess that's why I, I like to listen to you yeah. and learn a lot from you because you have your systems and you work on systems and, and, but yeah, the, the virtual assistant is one thing that maybe because I don't feel comfortable completely telling them what I need them to do. That's, yeah. I think probably a lot of new new guys and new people that's kind of get new in the business. They're probably thinking like I do. I, like, how am I going to tell them what I need them to do? They're just going to be wasting my money. Yeah, I, I don't know it. what I need. I don't know what I need to do. Yeah, I get you it. You know, I, I, I've got to figure it out first. That's you know, I'm I'm going to plug shamelessly plug this course that I'm going to be creating with Tom. Um, and by the way, guys, you should all listen to episode eighty four that I did with Tom Kroll. And that's kind of what got me all fired up with this. Episode 84. Write that down. Go listen to it. But, I don't do anything. Yeah. He lets the virtual assistant do everything. Yep, yeah, exactly. <laughs> and so, you know, he gives me a lot of credit. If you listen to that podcast, he gives me a lot of credit. Because I remember yeah. when he was first getting started, um, I was kicking him in the butt, you know, and just he was running ragged. Um, so, but uh, he's... He, Tom is uh, he's a he's a fantastic wholesaler, and we're going to be um, giving everybody who invests in this course, and it's, it's going to be super cheap. Um, all of the things that we give our VAs to do. So, in other words, um, let us train your VAs for you. Use our process manual, as it were, to get your VAs to do this stuff for you. It's really simple, and sometimes you just build it as you go, Trent. You know, it's just right. well, okay, well, I don't understand all of how it works yet, or what I want the person to do, but. This is my end goal. My end goal is I want to talk to five sellers a day, and I want to make an offer to every single seller that calls, and I want to follow up with every single seller that's ever called me ever. That's right. your end goal, right? So then you get the assistant to help you do that. And sometimes it's like, you know, I don't know how to do this, but here's some videos, or please help me figure it out. And a lot of times they will. You know what I'm saying? All right. So good, Trent. Um, man, I'm really happy for you, and I'm proud for you that uh, you're doing these deals now in Oklahoma City. It's a great market. Um, we were talking about this earlier. I had some coaching students. I've actually interviewed them before on the podcast that were wholesaling deals in Oklahoma City from the country of Lebanon. And uh, I think they're still doing deals. I haven't talked to them in a while. Um, I always was nervous talking to them, Trent, because, you know, Oklahoma City, um, you know, it's a, uh, it's a good old – country boy market, right? Yeah. And uh, proud to be an American. And I'm talking to these guys who are Arab, Muslim, in <laughs> Lebanon. And this was all going on when the NSA was, um, like, it was all in the news that they were listening in on all of our phone calls. And so I'm sure the NSA was listening in <laughs> on our phone calls as I was talking to these guys about Oklahoma City from Lebanon. But they're great guys, Wassam and... Um, and uh, Oh, I forget his other name. Wasam, Wasim. Yeah, some, ah, I'm sorry, guys, if you're listening to this. Um, <laughs> but those were the guys that actually introduced me to Podio. Isn't that a crazy small world? Um, wow. The, uh, we were talking about, um, I, was, I, forget, I was using Smartsheet at the time. And Wasam, um, I hope I got his, I'll think of his name later. Wasim. Yasin, Yasin, okay, Yasin oh, and Wissam. Okay, sorry, great guys, and uh, they were the ones who introduced me to Podio. And um, I think Wissam moved to the Philippines. Actually, he lives there now. And uh, Yasin, I think, lives in Oklahoma. I, I probably 
got their names mixed up, so I apologize. But they're great guys, and I interviewed them. If any of you guys are interested in listening to that interview, uh, go back in the realestateinvestingmastery.com and look at that up. But um, cool, Trent. <laughs> Sorry about that money trail. But uh, right. I thought it was funny. I, um, and a f good friend of mine, Corey Boatwright, also lives in your neck of the yeah. woods. Do you ever yeah, talk I, to him or see him? Oh, I uh, I connected with him on, uh, uh, goodness, Real Estate Mogul. Yeah. I connected with him on there. Uh, we talked some through that. Um, he gave me his phone number to call him if I had any questions. He's a good guy. Uh, Never, never have taken the chance, or never have taken the opportunity to stop and call. Uh, you should add him but, to your buyers list. Yeah, Corey yeah. Boatwright. Yeah, if he if he doesn't buy it, he'll probably have some buyers who will. Somebody, yeah, you can partner yeah. with you on those deals. Yeah, cool, Trent. Yep. Hey, what's um? You know, if somebody wants to contact you, Trent, to maybe partner on some deals, maybe they have some deals in Oklahoma City they want they don't have a buyer for, and you could partner with mm -hmm. them on it. Uh, what's a way that people could contact you? Um, probably the best way is just give me a call. Uh, and that's, you may give that phone number out. If you want. <laughs> uh, I, don't care. I mean, it's, 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 it's a Google voice. It's a Google okay. voice number. Right. So if they call and leave a message or whatever they want to do, yeah. usually I try to answer it, but, um, it's 918, uh, 324-6699. 918-324-6699. Yep. And, uh, you know, call, get, if you got a deal um, and you want to partner with Trent on it, or maybe you have a house you want to sell and you're actually yep. listening to this podcast, or you yep. want to get on Trent's buyer's list, uh, give him a call. And I like the fact, Trent, that you do answer your phone. That's yeah. the fastest way to a deal, right? You know? Well, that's what I feel. You got to be accessible to sellers and buyers. I mean, if you call, if you call, uh, a car salesman and they don't get back to you or whatever it may be. If you're, uh, I, I, I think of lumber salesman yeah. because yeah. I've been in that business for so long, but I think if I can't get a hold of them to order my material, then I may call somebody else. I tell you, man, have you ever locked, have you ever went and looked for a house, right? And tried to get a hold of a realtor that had the yes. sign in the yard or I just can't believe how frustrating it is to get a hold of anybody. You know, especially, and I'm guilty of this too. They know they got a cell phone because there's not hardly anybody in the United States now that don't have a cell phone. Mm -hmm. I mean, even my grandpa, who was 90, I mean, I'm sorry, who was 87, my mom and dad bought him a smartphone. Oh, yeah. Does he and use so it? That, yes. And he loves it because he can ask it to dial or call whoever he wants to, or yeah. he can ask it a question and he gets an answer and it reads back to him. He's uh, partially blind. So he loves oh, really? it. Really? Yes. He don't know. He don't know how to use anything, but the, uh, okay, Google. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he does know how to say that. That's so, so funny. Cause when we were in Italy, um, these taxi drivers, the taxi drivers in Italy. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Just make sure you have life insurance before you go to Italy and get in a taxi. Uh, those guys are just insane. And so this one taxi driver was trying to talk to me and ask me questions or whatever. And uh, he had a smartphone. And uh, while he was, I mean, he was doing 20 things at once. But he would get his phone and he would open up Google Translate and would speak in Italian and then show me the phone like this. And the thing would, would translate what he said. And I would speak back in it, you know, in English, and he would look at it in Italian to see. What, we did that for about 15, 20 minutes, and I was just praying the whole time, God, help him stay on, stay on the road, you know. <laughs> but um, phones are yeah. amazing these days. All right, Trent, thanks a lot, man. This has been good. I appreciate no you taking the time to kind of give people your story. And if anybody yeah. is interested in, in working with me and getting some help, if you go to joemccall.com, you can find information about my own coaching and what I do a lot of one-on-one -on -one consulting and I do some group coaching. I'm really big on systems and getting you getting your wholesaling business automated. And there's really, really simple, easy ways to do that. So if you're interested, go to joemccall.com or somewhere on realestateinvestingmastery.com is a place you can go to get more information. I love working with guys like Trent and actually taking action and doing deals. Um, it's, it's, it's a pleasure to work with guys like you, Trent. Thank you. All right. 
All right. For to know you and working with you too. I appreciate your help so far. Thanks. Thanks a lot. All right, guys. See you later. Take care. Bye-bye.